So yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little pissed that you get a handout there, Callum. Yeah, it wasn't quite a handout. It was that literally a handout. I mean, like, I'd be pissed too if my mouth got me cancelled. Oh, whoa, 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 goodness. Wow. Guys, guys, guys. guys. Lack of serious in a... Oh, no, oh, oh, my oh no. What up? After weeks and weeks and seemingly even more weeks and weeks and weeks, like more weeks than Roman Reigns has had a feud with Goldberg, it was officially announced yesterday that WWE were moving WrestleMania from the Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay in front of 100,000 fans to the WWE Performance Center in Orlando in front of no fans. Due to the thing that shall not be named for fear of being demonetized on YouTube. This comes off the back of episodes of Raw and SmackDown coming from that same building with no one in attendance. And the news that many other major wrestling promotions have cancelled or postponed their shows. OTT have pulled Scrapper Mania, ROH cancelled Past vs Present, PWG cancelled Kobe, New Japan have suspended all their tours, WrestleCon has been cancelled, the XFL won't be playing regular season games anymore, we here at WrestleTalk had to cancel the Battle of Brit Rest, which became a partnership with Will Ospreay for No Fans Monday. Thank you for everyone who chewed in for that, my face and neck still hurts. And AEW have announced that they've moved their tapings of Dynamite to new locations. Not only that, but WWE told the Wrestling Observer that the Hall of Fame and NXT TakeOver Tampa Bay shows will not take place as previously scheduled. The current speculation is that TakeOver could take place on the Wednesday before WrestleMania, where it would go head to head with AEW Dynamite. So with all that in mind, WrestleMania being moved isn't that big of a surprise. Having said that, the very reliable WrestleVotes did tweet prior to the announcement that Mania relocating to the Performance Center has very little support. And according to a good source, Vince really does not want to host the event in an empty stadium. He's very much against it, his least favorite option I've heard. Which ties into a very interesting report from Fight Oracle on Twitter. Now, if you're not familiar with that name, Fight Oracle have a really good track record of scoops. First reporting that Edge was back in training for an in-ring return, Drew McIntyre and Charlotte Flair would win this year's Royal Rumbles, and them buying access and CM Punk being in talks with Fox for WWE backstage. And according to Fight Oracle, WrestleMania will not take place at the WWE Performance Center on April 5th. And this is in fact all a ruse. And yes, it all comes down to money. The series of tweets say that WWE's insurance Insurance policy for Mania says they have a duty to mitigate damages, which essentially means in order to get an insurance policy payout, they had to find a new venue for the show if the first venue was no longer available. So WWE announced that Mania would be at the Performance Center, which fulfills that requirement. Fight Oracle reports the thought is that the city of Orlando will shut down the WrestleMania event from the Performance Center. At this point, WWE will have shown they tried their best to move the event, mitigate damages, and and they get paid by their insurer. So the move to the Performance Center in front of no fans, according to this report, is just to make sure WWE don't lose too much money on Mania being moved from Raymond James Stadium. Fight Oracle adds that the plan is actually for Mania to take place on June 7th, with Madison Square Garden, the home of the very first WrestleMania, as the target venue for this new date. Fight Oracle concludes, of course everything is fluid. Everything at this point is a rumor until Vince McMahon makes the call. It just doesn't make sense to run WrestleMania from the PC. It's just part of the insurance claim process. Process. Conversely, Dave Meltzer noted on Wrestling Observer Radio that Vince's current position is that he just wants to get WrestleMania out of the way, as we could be in a situation where we have no live events with crowds until November. As Fight Oracle notes, this could all just be rumor and innuendo. For all we know, the current plan is to run WrestleMania from the Performance Center in front of no fans, the same as they've done for Raw and SmackDown this past week. But it also doesn't sound out of the realms of possibility. After all, Vince went to Tampa last week essentially to argue the case that WrestleMania should still go ahead, even though every other show in the world has been cancelled. Those in charge told the press the ball was in WWE's court to cancel. They had to make the call. And if they didn't make that call, Tampa Bay officials would force their hand. So WWE were digging their heels, likely because Mania has never been cancelled in the past and there's always that insurance money. So we'll have to see how this one plays out. Thank you for your support on Patreon, and boy is it needed now, Kratos' forgotten son, Chris Petrow. 
Just before we get into Ollie Davis's Raw review, Alberto Del Rio has found himself back in the news saying that there are plans for him to return to WWE this year. Del Rio told, oh man, I'm gonna get this one so wrong, aren't I? Noseo la noche? Los Cayo la noche? Nos Cayo la noche? I'm so sorry, everyone. Del Rio told, that show, we have been in communication, we have rebuilt the bridge. On their part, they were wrong on some decisions, and I also did some things wrong on my part. I'm hoping that we can reach an agreement sometime this year, or by the middle of this year, I'll be back there. Del Rio and WWE have always had somewhat of a rocky relationship. He was pushed as a top star in the early 2010s, winning a Royal Rumble and having featured feuds over both the WWE and World Championships, but was fired in 2014 over a backstage altercation, which Del Rio claims was with an employee who made a racist remark against him. He made a surprise return in 2015 with Zeb Coulter as his manager for some reason, but got suspended for a wellness policy violation, then exercised an opt-out clause in his contract, which meant he could leave if he wasn't happy with his position, saying that he was given a lot of empty promises about a main event push that never came to fruition. However, he also made headlines due to his relationship with Paige, with the two having several public altercations that led to arrests and police reports. And according to a fight for report, from last year, one of the reasons WWE would not pursue rehiring Del Rio at this point is because of his history with Paige, and they wouldn't want things to be awkward between the two in the company. At this point, it's hard to say whether WWE would bring him back. While they don't want to jeopardize their relationship with Paige, it has been previously reported that Vince McMahon loves Alberto Del Rio and would love to have him back in the company. So like WrestleMania going to Madison Square Garden on June 7th, we'll have to wait and see on this one. And now now, hot tank to Ollie Davis for the Raw review. Oh, oh, the Raw review. Ah. Hello, I'm Ollie Davis with the 16th of March 2020 episode of Monday Night Raw. In about five minutes, Todd Phillips, Byron Saxton, and Jerry Lawler open the No Fans episode standing shoulder to shoulder in the ring. That's not social distancing! Where they called this the most unique edition of Monday Night Raw in history. And for once, WWE hyperbole was pretty accurate. This was the most unique episode of Raw I've ever seen, in front of no fans at the WWE Performance Center, just like SmackDown the Friday night before. To their enormous credit, WWE attempted to work within their new very restrictive conditions, and started innovating what a weekly wrestling program can be during the apocalypse. And it started with something that might actually work better without an audience. Very well cut, intimate, promos. After legit driving 17 hours down from Canada because of flight restrictions in place, Edge got in the ring, looked right in the camera, and cut a promo on Randy Orton with all the quiet intensity of Jake the Snake. He said only he'd learned Mick Foley's lesson of grit, and two weeks ago when Beth Phoenix came out on Raw, she was going to announce Edge's retirement again. But because of what Randy did to her, Edge is coming back to kick his ass. It was Raw, a emotional and felt more real because of the setting. These are scary times, but they could provide an opportunity to hard reset how WWE presents their product. They've become bloated, lazy over the years. They've hidden behind production and the reactions of the crowd. Here, you can't just script in, pause for crowd reaction or chant. Last night, wrestlers spoke like people rather than call and response robots to the crowd. Now, everything has been stripped back. As Finn Balor said about NXT when he moved back last year, the main roster is Hollywood with special effects and editing. NXT is Broadway, raw, real, with nowhere to hide. The bulk of the episode was taken up by replaying the Men's Royal Rumble match in its entirety, which is a smart move, as it fills time with great action, a hot crowd, and builds that Mania match between Drew and Brock. The only question is whether it actually works. Has the majority of WWE's audience already seen it? Will they watch it anyway, even if they have, because there's nothing else to do? Or, like me, 
did they skip it? The TV ratings will make for a fascinating read and should inform WWE's creative process going forward even more than usual. WWE also wisely focused on pre-tapes and video packages. The more you shoot around the empty arena, doing skits backstage or vignettes at people's houses, the more this feels like a normal television show as opposed to a wrestling show with an obviously lacking crowd. They need to lean into this even more though. Pre-tape everything, even the matches. You can edit them to make it more dramatic, shoot them more like a movie. Go back and re-watch season one of Lucha Underground. Stop making it live so you can shoot multiple episodes back to back like the pre-tape days of NXT. It'll be safer for the crew and wrestlers working and let them self-isolate for longer. And please, 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 please cut this show down to two hours, 90 minutes, maybe even an hour. Because while this installment was a fascinating oddity, it'll tire very fast at three hours a week. The last hour was new stuff though. Undertaker and AJ Styles had a contract signing where we got a pissed off bandana wearing, very American badass style version of The Undertaker rather than the dead man. He stormed down to the ring, flipped the table and ended the segment beating up Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows while AJ stayed backstage. Rey Mysterio beat Andrade in a really quick match that I wouldn't have minded go an extra five minutes. I think I prefer no crowd to a dead crowd, especially when the in-ring work is as solid as this. Becky Lynch delivered her promo well, but there's something about her feud with Shayna Baszler that's not catching fire. Quick, have more people eat each other. Kevin Owens accepted Seth Rollins' WrestleMania match, saying the Performance Center gives him the home field advantage, and the main event was an odd, bizarre, meta-wrestling masterpiece. Stone Cold Steve Austin drank beer in the ring, read cue cards about what 316 day is all about, things like when the speed limit is just a suggestion, and when your boss works for you, all while Byron Saxton rated each line with a scorecard. It was, yep, it was the best wrestling segment of all time. If WWE's plan is to turn into a wrestling version of the Eric Andre show, then roll on, coronavirus! The segment was bizarrely brilliant, containing a perfectly timed cut to the empty chairs when Austin asked for a hell yeah. And then he stunned Saxton and drank beer with Becky to celebrate. What did you think of this unique episode of Monday Night Raw? Let me know in the comments because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere. And vote in the poll above my head to give your ratings. It is a difficult one to rate though. There's so much weirdness, but I really enjoyed it. How sustainable this is long term is doubtful, but for one night, especially after all the fun we had at No Fans Monday, Edge's promo and Austin's silliness took my mind off things. And in times like this, that's all we can ask for. You can watch the full WrestleTalk Showcase No Fans Monday event by clicking the video on the right on what are the 10 funniest moments of the WWE Attitude Era. Click the video below that for Adam Blompier's latest list. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was wrestling.